this year has started out as a as a transition for me. Uh, I am hoping and praying. And last night I I was with uh, my oncologist, and he has basically given me the go ahead to uh, return to Mexico to return to ministry uh, in the middle of next month. I have. A, couple of small things that need to be checked out first but but all the important stuff has been uh, you know as, as good to go so uh, I'm very grateful for that and and I can just feel my heart and my prayers and my thoughts moving towards what's going on in Mexico and in Kikomar and seeing seeing the areas of ministry that have had to be laid aside, uh, things such as uh, school supervision for the two young boys that, that live there and uh, they've fallen behind and there are things that I'm like, oh Lord, you know, but uh, he's taking me back at the right time to be able to help with that. Uh, very grateful for I the help for the kids now. Sorry, um, uh, Ellie and Abiel, Mama's kids, right? Yes, Abiel will soon be twelve, and Obed will soon be ten, Jeez. and young um, Eliab will be four. Yes, and we're very grateful because uh, this last year, 2023, and doing all the finances and figuring out how many groups came and everything, we can pretty much say that that we are back to pre-COVID levels as far as uh, finances, the, the camp um, covers two thirds of its costs uh, uh, with with what we generate at the camp itself and then the other third is don donors so that uh, turned upside down during the pandemic but it's back to where it was before and and also the number of people the number of campers we got the groups back and this in spite of the fact that I've been away and Mina has been handling all the administration on her own and she's done a great job and she was in the middle of, she had a surgery as well. There were so many things that happened last year in spite of our small team and our weakness and our illness and God just did everything. So there's so much to be grateful for. And um, we're looking forward to, to this next year. We have uh, in early March, the first two weeks of March, we have a team from Canada coming to do construction. And this is a small prayer request and even an advertisement uh, because the the leader of the team, Alan Holt, who has actually been in Memorial Park, uh, is looking for two or three more team members to come and join the team. And this is for uh, mostly the, the people who are coming are retired men who like to use screwdrivers and hammers and saws and so um, these are older men but it can be women as well anybody who's willing to just when in get March? out there and when in March uh, the second through the 16th of March and uh, he has he worked he's with LAM Canada, Latin American Mission Canada, so it would be a fully uh, covered team by insurance and all of the things that that teams need, you know. So if anybody is interested and would like to be a part of it, we we would love to have that. And my hope is to be back so that I can help this year because it was very hard for me in the last year without me there so we hope to both be there 
and uh, and are looking forward to that. And then with regard to the Huasteca and the persecuted church and the people that we support in the indigenous people. Uh, last week, just at the beginning of the year, um, Rogelio wrote to me. I haven't been able to talk to him since, but uh, he had spent the night in jail with three new believers who uh, who were put in jail because it, it, trying to pressure them to to renounce their faith. And in these indigenous com uh, communities, the maximum jail time without an official uh, charge is like 72 hours. So they were let out. It was not severely violent but uh, but early in the year this it's always a time of new violence because they get new leaders in the community and they're they're not accepting the new believers every new believer is is uh, causes violence and and Rogelio gets to go to jail with them because he's the pastor so so we just need to keep praying for for them as they move forward. The school is going well with the kids. There are over 50 children in the school, and but there's always uh, there's always risk for the for the children, especially the young girls. There's been threats of them being raped and things like that. So we just need to pray for protection.